Our desire is that this message can lead you to a deep reflection on the processes and tools of self-transformation provided by the renowned Yog Sadhguru. If you want to start your yoga journey, together with Sadhguru, click the link in the description of this video and learn more. You can incubate a lot of either negative things or positive things in sleep. This is getting too easy, just sleeping sadhana. So coming awake to an alarm bell with a sudden start is not the best way to do your life. How many of you find uh, that one day morning when you get up without any reason, you're just feeling ugly for no reason? If it is happening even at least two, three times a year, if it is, then you must do certain things before you go to bed. It's very, very important because unconsciously, you need to understand this, you can incubate a lot of either negative things or positive things in sleep. Either pleasantness or unpleasantness, you can incubate very effectively uninterrupted in sleep. You can also incubate it in the day, but there are so many interruptions, it doesn't happen very efficiently. But if you have a tendency to go to bed in a certain way and you wake up in the morning really nasty for simply no reason, that means you're incubating things in the night very efficiently. Bad eggs. This is not just about psychological disturbances, it can cause major physiological problems over a period of time. It's, it's important that you eliminate these things from your life. So before you go to bed in the night, there are certain things that you need to take care of. It's best if you're eating meat and other kinds of meals, you eat at least three to four hours before you go to bed. The digestion is over. Before going to bed, drink a certain amount of water and go to bed. You will see it gets taken care of just like this. One simple thing can be just a shower, always to shower before go to bed, it'll make a lot of difference. In this weather, maybe cold showers are difficult, so you go for lukewarm showers, don't go for hot showers in the night, go for lukewarm showers, it makes you alert. So you will think, oh, I cannot sleep. It doesn't matter, you will sleep fifteen, twenty minutes or half an hour later, but you will sleep better because it will take away certain things. When you shower, it is not just the dirt on the skin that you're taking away. Have you noticed if you're very tense and anxious, whatever, just a shower, you came out and feels like almost the burden has been taken away from you? Have you not noticed this? So it's not just about washing the skin, a whole lot of things happen when water flows over your body. This shower is a very rudimentary bhuti shuddhi because over seventy percent of your body is actually water. If you run water over it, a certain purification happens which is beyond cleaning the skin. One more thing if you want to do, you just light an organic oil lamp, a cotton wick, some oil, anything. What do you use here? Normal cooking oil linseed oil, rice bran oil or sesame oil, what do you have? Olive oil. Olive oil, fine. Any organic oil with a cotton wick, just burn a little lamp somewhere in the room where you sleep. You will see these things will completely disappear. If you can bring in a chant or there are nightly practices, yogic practices, before you go to bed, sit on your bed and do this practice. Do you know, in about… if you live for about sixty years, you're… on an average most human beings are eating anywhere between eleven hundred to fourteen hundred tons of food. So that means even what you think is my body is not this, it's changing every day. 
New input is happening and old things are going away. So fourteen hundred tons, you don't have to carry that much of weight right now. So obviously, what you have as a body right now is just a transient amount of food and soil, isn't it? Hello? So what you think is mine also is not it, it is just all the time changing. Tonight before you go to bed, spend at least twelve, fifteen minutes reminding yourself, you're neither this body nor this mind. Just lie down and just remind yourself, this body is not really you. It is mine right now for use, but it's not really me. Just… if you're not able to do it, just link it to your breath. Inhalation, I am not the body. Exhalation, I am not even the mind. Just lie down for twelve minutes and do it. Till the last moment, till you fall asleep. This is something you must notice. Just do this one simple exercise. If you do this, you will live a worthwhile life, believe me. If you sleep in that condition, you will wake up with much more light, with much more energy. Generally, in India they told you, you should not put your head to the north and sleep. Hmm? You're aware of this? If you put your head to the north and sleep during the night when you… when you're in horizontal positions, then slowly the blood will get pulled towards your brain. When there's too much circulation in the brain, you cannot sleep peacefully. If you have any kind of, you know, inherently weak aspects in your brain or if you're of old age, you could die in your sleep. One can have hemorrhage because extra blood is trying to enter the brain where the blood vessels are hair-like. Something extra is being pushed because of the magnetic pull. When you're in a vertical position, this is not so. The moment you become horizontal, this pull on the head is so strong that slowly the blood tries to move towards the brain. So to avoid this, this is true only in the northern hemisphere. If you go to Australia, you should not put your head to the south. If you're in India, you should not put your head to the north. You can put it any other way, it's okay. Keep this in your mind that you are truly a mortal, okay? Not in words, really, you could fall dead right now. Uh, you may be young, you may be old, it doesn't matter, you can fall dead right now. Yes or no? Before you go to bed, sit on your bed and think this is your deathbed. You have just one more minute to live. Just look back and see, what you have done today, is it worthwhile? Just do this one simple exercise and you don't know when it really happens, whether you'll be sitting on your deathbed or lying in a hospital, all kinds of things sticking into you, who knows how it'll happen. But enjoy this every day that you'll sit on your deathbed, look back and see today, the way I've handled these twenty-four hours, is it worthwhile? Because now I'm dying. If you do this, you will live a worthwhile life, believe me. So every day in the night, all of you should do this before you go to bed. Last three minutes, Everything that you have gathered, the body, the content of the mind, things, don't ignore small things, the small things are big things. I've seen how people are carrying their… their own private pillow, you know? <laughs> because it's very important. <laughs> so, your pillow, your footwear, if you have relationships, everything that you have gathered, keep it aside, sleep. If you sleep in that condition, you will wake up with much more light, with much more energy, with much more possibilities than you have imagined possible. Just sleep as life, not as a man, not as a woman, not as this and that. Keep everything down, simply. See, I'm, this is getting too easy. Just sleeping sadhana.
Hmm? At least this you must do. I'm talking about attention not even about something, just being attentive. In the yogic systems, we have what is called as dashavadanis, shatavadanis. What this means is, a man will do ten things at the same time. Now, when you don't miss a thing, everybody thinks you're some kind of a superhuman being. We can give you very uh, dynamic processes through which you can scale up your attention to a higher and higher level. focus to you in, and which way can we apply focus in our daily life? So, what's your definition of focus? Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, there are many ways to describe this word. Instead of saying focus, if you use the word attention, would you agree that attention and focus are about the same thing? There is a little difference. There is… there are nuances to it, but when you say focus, it's just like focusing a light on something means only a focus is always a spot. Attention can be much more widespread. See, right now, if you have clear vision, I am having problems seeing the young man because you kept him in darkness there in the hall <laughs> But if the hall was well lit, I don't have to focus myself to see the people who are sitting here. I just need attention. If I'm attentive, I will see all the people here the way they are. But now I get interested in this one young man, then I need focus. If I had only focus without the general attention about everything around me, indiscriminate attention I'm talking about. Attention not even about something, just being attentive because… only because there is a certain level of attention and awareness within you, you even know that you exist. Otherwise, let's say in sleep, in your experience, neither the world exists nor you exist, all that's happened is, there is no attention, because there is no attention, there is no perception of any kind. So first thing is attention, that there is a general grasp of everything. Then there is a particular interest. Then we focus it down to that particular interest. So what is the purpose or what is the definition of focus? What is the use of focus? Where can focus get us? We are focusing on something only because our attention is not keen enough. If our attention was very keen, you would not need to focus on anything. In the yogic systems, we have what is called as dashavadanis, shatavadanis. What this means is, a man will do ten things at the same time. Another man will do hundred things at the same time. This is, he will… he will articulate a particular musical raga, at the same time he will calculate a very complex arithmetic problem, at the same time he will write poetry, at the same time like this he will do ten things or one hundred things. There are people like this. You can either use that to just be a stage performer or you can just use it in your life, you're an entrepreneur. It's very important if you're walking on the street, you're able to see something that most other people cannot see. That is when you become a leader because you are able to see things others are yet to see. That is when you take up a leadership position because Essentially, leadership means you're on a perch. Once you're on a perch, you must see better than others. So attention is that dimension which will put you on that perch. If your attention… if your attention has to be very keen about everything, then you should stop discriminating in terms of, I like this person, 
I don't like this person, this is good, this is bad, this is nice, this is not nice, this is useful, this is not useful. If you do not make any kind of discrimination, you just work on your attention, not about being attentive about something, just being super attentive, not about anything. See, right now if you… if you increase the voltage in this hall where you're sitting, when light comes on, light is not thinking in terms of whom should I focus on? When light comes on, everything that is there in that room will be seen. This is important, this is a very important aspect of yogic process is that we go on working on our attention, that we keep on keying up our attention to a higher and higher level, a higher and higher voltage and intensity. Now we don't encourage focus because focus means consolidate all that attention and put it on one person. Suppose you invested your entire focus on one spot and you found nothing worthwhile in that spot, what will you do at the end of your life? This is what is happening to most lives. Now, you just work on making your attention itself so keen that even if somebody focuses on something, they won't be that keen. If your attention is that keen, you won't miss a thing in this universe. Now, when you don't miss a thing, Everybody thinks you're some kind of a superhuman being. No, 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 this is not about being superhuman. This is about realizing being human itself is super. So, if you cultivate your attention, there are… Uh, we can give you very uh, dynamic processes through which you can scale up your attention to a higher and higher level. How clearly you see, determines how successfully you walk this life, there's no question about it. How much lack of clarity there is in you, that much blundering you will do in your life, simply there is no question about this. So, if one has to get… first of all work towards cultivating this attention, first thing is you stop your sense of discriminatory looking that you don't look at this person, oh, this is a man, this is a woman, this is a dog, this is this, this is that. Simply pay attention without any judgment. If you just pay attention to anything and everything without any judgment, you will see if you just pay attention to an ant, there are phenomenal things. You're in Germany, who knows if you pay enough attention to an ant, may, you may come up with the best automobile on the planet because I have not seen any machine moving with as much dexterity as an ant moves. But I think nobody has paid enough attention to an ant <laughs> So, attention, raising the bar of attention is more important than focus. For immediate purposes, if you need to focus on something, you can. But right now you can do a simple experiment. If you sit with your face slightly upturned like this and close your eyes, you will see naturally there will be a focus between your eyebrows. But you can be conscious of many things, people around you, your breath, the sensations in your body, you can be conscious of everything and still be focused. So mental focus is a limited possibility, but the attention, enhancement of attention that ultimately delivers you to a space where you become conscious or in other people's words, super conscious. It's just conscious, but people think you're super conscious. Because of this, you grasp everything as it is. The most important thing for this is that your mind is not functioning like a prism, distorting things and creating designs where they don't exist. Your mind has become like a plain mirror, it just shows everything just the way it is. Only when you see everything just the way it is, you will have the ability to handle everything sensibly, otherwise you make a mess out of many things. And this is very important for an entrepreneur <laughs> because you don't have a job <laughs>